Hi, my name is Ken from Just Mary Photography, and in this video, I'm going to answer the question of whether it's better to use continuous lights or strobes for photography. And the answer to that question will affect the way that you approach your workflow as a photographer, as well as the final results in many cases. As part of this video, I'd like to also talk about my favorite strobes and the gear that I use for continuous lights as well. Now, when it comes to comparing flashes and continuous lights for light output, it's not so simple. It's a little like comparing apples to oranges. Flash output is measured by their guide number and continuous lights are measured in a unit of lux. Guide numbers and lux are two different ways to measure light and they're used for different types of lighting. A guide number is used for flash units, which give off a quick bright burst of light and the guide number helps photographers know what camera settings to use to get the right exposure when the flash goes off. It's calculated by multiplying the distance to the subject by the aperture setting in the camera. Lux, on the other hand, measures continuous light, like the light in a room or from a lamp. It tells us how much light hits a surface and it's measured as lumens per square meter. You can't use a guide number for continuous lights because it's meant for those quick bursts of light from a flash. And you can't use lux for flashes because it measures con constant light, not the short, intense light that comes from a flash. Each type of light needs its own way to be measured because they work so differently, apples and oranges. So keep in mind, it's not so easy to compare flash light output versus continuous light output. But for the rest of this video, I'll refer to their watts and watt seconds as a way to refer to power. So let's get into the technicals and the gear. So the first thing is my favorite strobes. For speed lights, I prefer to use the Godox V1. The Godox V1 is a fantastic little on-camera strobe uh, speed light, which basically has a round Fresnel head giving a round uh, light fall off um, and very even light coverage. Very powerful at 76 watts per second and has a fast recharge time of about 1.5 seconds at full charge. The battery life is fantastic, it's reliable and it's portable. You can put it on camera and use it as an on camera bounce flash and you can also take it off camera really quickly for some off camera uh, speed light work with a trigger. The downside of the Godox V1 is that it's not powerful enough to be able to be used in broad daylight situations when you need light to be able to fill fill your subject. And that's where the Godox 8200 comes in, which is my favorite on location strobe. Uh, and the strobe is battery powered. It has a light output of about 200 watts per second. You can also interchange the head. So you could put on a Fresnel head or you can put on a bare bulb with a uh, reflector dish on it. It's a compact strobe, which is powerful enough to be able to be used in studio, but you can use it on location. It has excellent battery life. It's versatile, it's powerful, and I use it all the time in broad daylight situations when the subject is backlit by the sun and I need to fill light my subject with the strobe. Now in terms of my favorite continuous lights, I like to use the Nanlite Pavo Slim 120C as well as the Zhiyun Mollus G300, which is a fantastic new video light. Now let's talk about the Nanlite Pavo Slim 120C. This continuous light is basically a two foot by one foot uh, light panel and uh, it's V-mount operable. So you can battery power it if you're on location without uh, a wall plug-in, but you can also plug it into the wall if you want. I like this light because you can quickly dial in some cool color combos. So you can do HSI combos of blue and pink and red and whatever you want. And you can color your background as well as color your subject. Very simple, very easy. Now to do that with a strobe, you basically have to gel your light. The downside of the Pavo Slim 120C is that it outputs about 120 watts of light and it's not powerful enough to be able to be used on location outdoors in a situation where you need to fill the subject in very bright sunlight situations. And that's where the Zhiyun Mollus G300 comes into play. I love this light because it gives out about 300 watts of light and you can boost it to max 500 watts. The Mollus G300 is actually built different from its competitors and gives it a slight advantage in multiple ways. First, it's way brighter. Second, is that it's actually separated the light from the control panel, which is really nice because then you don't actually have to lower the light if you wanted to change the settings. 
Plus it makes it less top heavy. So the center of gravity and the balance of the light is, is easier, especially if you're using light stands that maybe potentially are not quite as heavy. So it's not gonna tip over as easy. It's a Bowens mount adapter friendly uh, light so you can attach soft boxes with Bowen mounts and you can also change it from 2500 to 6500 Kelvin range which is great because then you can use it in different lighting situations for bicolor lights. And did I mention that it's super bright? Now there's one downside to this light, which is basically that it can't be battery powered. It's not natively battery powered. You'd have to plug it into a wall to be able to get it to work. But to get around that, what I do is that I use an AC battery source, such as the Blue Weddy solar generator battery packs. You just need to make sure that the battery pack can output uh, more than is required by your video light, so more than 300 watts. And if you'd like to purchase any of this gear, check out the links down below in the description, including a 10% off discount for the Mollus G300. And so with that out of the way, we've talked about the gear that I use, the strobes, as well as continuous lights. Let's talk about the, competi the comparative advantages between using continuous lights versus strobes. Now, strobes are fantastic when you're using light uh, that needs to be able to freeze action. And strobes can do that, but continuous lights cannot. The downside though of strobes is that you can't use it for video work, which is very wonderful to be able to use for continuous lights. So for hybrid shooters, if you're shooting video and you're shooting photography, you need to be able to switch back and forth between the two. Video lights, continuous lights are definitely the way to go. The advantage of strobes, however, is that they require way smaller battery packs and you can get away with these batteries lasting a lot longer than continuous lights. Continuous lights usually have to be plugged into the wall to be able to be used for a long period of time. And if they are battery powered, the batteries don't last for very long. At most, I can get about one hour of battery out of my battery packs for continuous lights, but for strobes, they can last all day in many cases. Now there's one other advantage with continuous lights. Continuous lights give you kind of a what you see is what you get kind of situation where basically uh, you can very easily model the light on your subject. And for photographers who are just getting into photography, that's a huge advantage because it makes it a lot easier to be able to explicitly know how the light is going to look on your subject. I like to use continuous lights in situations where I know I'm just gonna run and gun and move around the subject really quickly. And I just wanna be able to dial in my settings, shooting at higher ISOs as necessary, and even shooting with lower apertures. Uh, now that's one of the things that makes continuous lights really appealing to me is that I can shoot with primes down to say 1.2 aperture and I don't have to worry so much about blowing out the, the subject because I know exactly what I'm seeing in my camera with the, uh, with the continuous lights. For strobes, however, that usually takes quite a, uh, a little bit more time to be able to dial that in. And for photographers who are just getting started with strobes, a lot of times it's a lot more difficult for them to be able to just nail it right off the top. And so sometimes it takes a lot longer uh, for you to be able to set your lights up. The other thing with continuous lights is that you can get away with shutter speeds way higher than with strobes. With strobes, there's a flash sync speed, so you can get uh, a flash sync, sync speed of sometimes one over 180 or one over 200. And if you go beyond that, then the shutter can't keep up with the, the strobe and you, get up, you end up with these dark bands in your image. Whereas with continuous lights, you don't have to worry about that. Sometimes you can shoot with shutter speeds as high as one over 500 or even higher, and uh, there's no problems. Now in those situations, for strobe users, usually you would have to go and switch it into high speed sync mode on your strobe, which allows you to be able to shoot at a higher shutter speed. But the downside of doing that is that the strobe loses a lot of power. And so that can be a downside and one of the reasons why shooting with ND filters might be best. But I personally find that using ND filters can sometimes change the quality of the image. Plus it's a lot more clunky and you have to dial in your settings, it takes a lot more time. So continuous lights are fantastic if you're shooting in really controlled environments such as indoors or you're shooting in dark environments where less light output is necessary, such as outdoors at nighttime, uh, continuous lights are really great for that. One more advantage of strobes versus continuous lights that 
maybe kind of not known to most people is the obtrusiveness of continuous lights. For example, if you're shooting strobes, oftentimes there's a pop of light, so it's not really that obtrusive, right? And people aren't squinting because the duration of the flash is so short that people are not gonna be squinting. Whereas with continuous lights, oftentimes they can get blinded because you need sometimes a lot of light to be able to be outputted, and that can definitely make people squint. So, uh, Continuous lights can sometimes be a little bit obtrusive, especially if you're shooting in high power situations with continuous lights versus strobes. So practically speaking, in situations where I need a lot of power and I need to be able to move around with batteries, I usually use strobes. So strobes on cameras like my Speedlight, the, the V1, great for bouncing your flash. Uh, as well, you can set up your strobe for outdoors if you're shooting in situations where um, you need to be able to overpower the sun. Strobes are fantastic for that. Especially if video is not necessary at the time, then strobes are great. But the minute video comes into the equation, at that point, continuous lights wins. So using the Molus G300 from Xiaoyun, for, in for instance, even with a battery pack, uh, from Bluetti, although it's a lot more, it's a lot heavier, the batteries are a lot heavier and the system is usually a lot clunkier, you can still shoot video outdoors with the same light source that you would be using for your photography. And in situations where I know I'm in a continued or a contained situation such as indoors, I'm shooting boudoir indoors such as, uh, for, exa for example, or I'm shooting a portrait session such as like a beauty session or something like that indoors, or maybe an engagement session or maybe something like um, a bridal prep indoors where it's controlled light situation using continuous lights are very wonderful and great for shooting BTS video as well as great for shooting uh, primes and just running gunning and without having to worry about changing the settings of my flash constantly. So there you have it. I hope that answers the question of whether or not it's better to shoot continuous lights or strobes for photographers. Again, if you're a hybrid shooter, I would definitely lean towards using continuous lights. So that's it for this video and I hope you enjoyed this content. If you like this kind of content, leave me a thumbs up for this video and leave me a comment down below letting me know what kind of lights you use for your photography and video. And so with that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.